Hi, my name is Michael Sounders. I'm a personal trainer and fitness nutrition specialist. I'm here today to talk about phase one and two of men's collegiate basketball program. The goal of the first two phases will be to return proper function to the body and build a foundation to increase gains for next season. Following strength coach Mike Boyle's guidelines, we will utilize a program that prevents injuries while training, will reduce the risk of performance related injuries, and will make the athlete feel and perform better. The main issue for basketball players coming off of a long season is overuse. Therefore, during the first two phases we will limit stress while training and build a foundation of mobility, proper movement, and stability. A 2010 NBA study gives insight on common injuries experienced by high-level basketball players. We will work to reduce the risk of these and other non-contact injuries. In phase one, we will improve breathing and posture. We will also teach the body to move efficiently. Two to three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions will be used to groove the new patterns. In phase two, we will progress to more dynamic movements and begin strength endurance using three sets of eight to 12 repetitions. We also begin deceleration training. We will use foam rollers and other tools for self-myofascial release in order to decrease the density of muscles. This will also increase blood flow and nutrient supply to the muscles. Some of our focus points will be the hip flexors, adductors, glutes, hamstrings, calves, lats, and thoracic spine. As the weeks progress, tissue quality will improve and self-myofascial release will require less time. We will use static stretching to elicit autogenic inhibition and lengthen short muscles. Be sure to fill the stomach with slow, deep breaths. Active stretching will create reciprocal inhibition and allow agonists and synergists to dynamically move a joint through a range of motion. Mobility drills will be used to teach proper neuromuscular control so that the body will move efficiently when performing meaningful tasks. If the body is unable to move a joint or joints properly, it will gain the movement from another area, increasing the risk of injury. For example, if ankle or hip mobility is poor, the knee and low back will provide the movement. This will increase the likelihood of injury to the knee and low back. We will use activation drills to wake up prime movers so the synergists don't take over and increase the risk of injury. Force travels from the ground through the legs, through the core, and out of the arms. Core activation will be used in order to prepare the core musculature to stabilize the spine while the limbs move and to discourage rib flare. Once the body has learned how to engage the core, we will become more dynamic with the exercises. Proper movement patterns will be established in order to improve neuromuscular control. Proper movement will produce a stronger, faster, and more powerful athlete and can reduce the risk of non-contact injury. We will focus on knee and hip dominant exercises as well as horizontal pushing and pulling with free scapular motion. We will utilize bilateral and unilateral multiplanar exercises.
Deceleration training will be used to improve eccentric control of joints while stopping and changing direction. This can reduce the risk of non-contact injury. Our phase one conditioning will consist of steady state cardio which will increase the amount of blood the heart can pump with each beat. Phase two will incorporate long intervals in order to increase the force with which the heart is able to contract. My name is Michael Satters. Thanks for joining me today. Work hard, stay strong.